welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2013 CFL season preview. We're taking a look at the Calgary Stampeders. We're going to break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Stamps this upcoming season. But first, let's go back to the 2013 draft to see how well they did this past May. Stamps made seven selections in this year's draft, and they wanted to have some guys that could help their football team out in 2013 and also put some guys in a pipeline for 2014. So you look at Brander Craighead, 6'6", 280 out of UTEP. He's a 2014 guy and one of the best tackle prospects in the draft. And you look at the rest of the picks they were able to make, guys like Charlie Power, Shane Bergman, Brett Jones, Yannick Moore, and Plant. These guys will help this football team out in some way, shape, or form this season. What I like most about the Stamps draft is that they were able to come away with a steal in the second round and Ben D'Aguilar, one of the best pass rushers in the CIS this season. So I think he's going to help bolster that pass rush and also don't sleep on Brett Jones. I think they hit home runs in the second round. That's what I like most about what the Stamps did. What I didn't like about the Stamps draft, I felt as though they missed an opportunity to add some young guys in the secondary to help compete with the free agents they brought in. You want to always have guys that you can develop at your pace, guys that you can mold and make into the player that you want them to be. And I felt as though they missed that opportunity without taking any defensive backs in the draft. I'm giving the Stamps a B-plus for their draft. Like I said before, the first overall selection was a 2014 pick. That's a great strategy right there. But in the second round where they hit those home runs with Ben Diaglar and Brett Jones, even get Shane Bergman later on in the draft, that's a solid draft all the way around. And those guys will be impact players in 2013. Stamps have the luxury of having two quality quarterbacks, and that's the positive way to look at it. The realistic view is that there's a quarterback battle that's taking place in camp and will have an ongoing effect throughout the course of the season. Drew Tate came into the season as a starter. He played well. He got injured. Then the veteran Kevin Glenn came in and also did well and led these guys to the Grey Cup. Trust me, it's a great situation to have if you're a GM or a coach but not a good situation to be in as a player. And either way, I view this as a position of strength for the Stamps. In the third slot is second-year man Bo Levi Mitchell, who has some arm talent and is still developing in the CFL game. John Corners finished the 2012 season as the league's leading rusher after nearly rushing for 1,500 yards at 5.6 yards a carry and 11 touchdowns. He's the perfect example of a guy that waited his turn and took full advantage of his opportunity. I also like the depth that they have behind him as well with Matt Walker, who was a fifth-round pick in 2011 after being one of the top backs in the CIS. LaMarcus Coker is the more elusive out of the bunch, and the Stamps also possess a pretty good fullback that's an integral part to their success in their ground game game as a whole and Rob Coat. Their running game allows them to control and dictate the clock and also I fully expect 2013 to be the same way. Nick Lewis has been a stud for the Stamps since he joined the team back in 2004 with over 730 career receptions, 10,000 yards and 85 touchdowns. Lewis is definitely headed for the Hall of Fame once his career is over. Now what makes him dangerous is quite honestly what makes all of the Stamps receivers very dangerous is their run after the catch ability, which can also be said about his slot back compadre Marque McDaniel. In his first season with the Stamps after spending the previous three in Hamilton, McDaniel caught 53 passes for almost 750 yards. Former third overall pick Anthony Parker is back at 100% and that's great news for the Stamps. It's been unfortunate for Parker during his first two seasons in Calgary dealing with injuries, but 2013 looks to be his chance to regain his form that made him one of the best young receiving prospects in the league. Now, Maurice Price also provided a nice surprise last year, averaging 22 and a half yards per reception. And there's a host of young guys, including some 2013 draft picks that can make an impact this season. I'm more intrigued, though, by former top quarterback prospect Brad Sinopoli. Now that he's made the complete move to wide receiver to see what he can do at that position and see if he can get on the field. But overall, this is a consistent bunch and one of the more stable units on the squad. You can't have a high-powered offense without having a pretty good offensive line. They go hand-in-hand. Hand. And I love what the Stamps were able to do with the interior of their offensive front. They built that line through the draft. You look at first-round pick in 2008, Dimitri Champas, 
very good guard. John Gott starting at center. He was a fifth round pick in 2008 as well. Jermichael Dean, third round selection in 2010, starting at the other guard. So they made some sound selections in the draft. And they have two very good bookends in Stanley Bryant at right tackle and a left tackle who's a superstar, in my opinion, in Edwin Harrison. Good depth as well behind these guys with Steve Middleton and 2013 draft picks Brett Jones, 6'2", 310 pounds out of Regina, and mammoth tackle Shane Bergman, who's 6'7", 352. So once again, using the draft to build that offensive line, whether it be on the interior or the exterior, the stamps are set up for long-term success up front. The defensive front of the Stamps did a great job applying pressure on a QB last season. Defensive end Charleston Hughes led the way with 11 sacks. Hughes also collected 53 tackles and was a dominant force up front. In the 2013 draft, the Stamps selected one of the premier pass rushers in the draft in Ben Diaglo out of McMaster. The 6'2", 240-pound edge rusher had a decorated career at McMaster, winning the J.P. Metris Trophy, which is awarded to the nation's top defensive lineman after a 12-and-a-half sack season, and the Stamps are expecting big things from him this year. On the interior, Corey Mason, DeMonte Bolden are cat quick off the line of scrimmage that they routinely draw double teams freeing up the outside rushers to be able to get to the quarterback. The Stamps, however, are thin on the inside, but they do have some quality depth along the edges. So look for defensive end Junior Turner to log more minutes this year and have a productive season. I'm also expecting a lot out of Luis Vasquez to be a key contributor on the inside. I'm a big fan of the Stamps linebacking core. They went after Rod Davis in free agency, bringing in an excellent combo backer Davis is entering his fifth CFL season. They're teaming him up next to Jawan Simpson, who plays like a man possessed. Simpson last year had 82 tackles, two sacks, and I love his instincts that he brings to the table. The six-year vet, Kenyon Raymond, mans the other linebacker spot, which is essentially a defensive back. His coverage skills makes it tough for opposing offenses week in, week out. Raymond has posted back-to-back -back five interception seasons and is looking for his second All-Star bid in 2013. Good depth as well behind these guys with Malik Jackson, who chipped in with 57 tackles. Chris Randall, who is very sound in coverage. So overall, very sound, talented, and athletic group of backers. Year in the secondary, the stamps were solid but not spectacular. There were plays to be made, but a lot was left on the field. And if they can convert some of those opportunities into interceptions, then this secondary can get back to what we saw a couple of years ago. Back at cornerback is Fred Bennett, who's entering his second CFL season and is looking to build on his 47 tackle, two interception campaign. Another 2012 rookie that played well last year was Darius Brooks. Brooks and Bennett should have even more success this year, in my opinion, after gaining valuable experience and getting acclimated to the CFL game. Brandon Smith is a pretty good halfback that displays the necessary instincts to play back there, along with Quincy Butler, whose progression arrow is shooting up. Former first-round pick in 2010, Eric Frazier stepped up into a starting role last year and played exceptionally well, showing great instincts and great range from sideline to sideline. Expect an increased role for second-year man Keenan McDougal as well, who played mostly on special teams but possesses the size at 6'2", 208 pounds that you want back there in the secondary. Rene Paredes was deadly accurate last season, connecting on 93% of his field goal attempts with a long of 46 yards. And punter Rob Maver also enjoyed a fine season with 37 and a half yards a punt with a long of 85. Now, when you look at the return game, Larry Taylor is one of the most effective returners in the league. He averaged over 20 yards per kickoff return, 11 yards per punt return with over 1,500 yards in combined return yardage. So once again, very solid special teams unit out here in Calgary. The road back to the Grey Cup for the Stamps goes as follows. Number one, they have to create more turnovers. Get that ball back for that explosive offense, and that's how you can blow teams out. And that leads me to my second point. They got to put teams away. Too many times last season they were involved in shootouts. That can't happen this year. You want to secure home field, make everyone have to go through Calgary so you can get back to the Grey Cup. And finally, heavy Cornish on the road. You got to be able to chew up that T.O.P., drain the clock, take a team's will by running the football. You got one of the best running backs in the league, so I would say more Cornish on the road can help get these guys back to the Grey Cup. I have the Stamps finishing third in the West Division. Still some minor questions about the secondary and whether or not they can be effective in creating turnovers, but overall, very explosive offense, very good running game, 
veteran offensive line with a lot of talent, this team will be back into the playoffs and make a lot of noise. I also want to give a huge shout out to Stamps Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.